Hello, my name is Benjamin Hart. I'm an American attorney and the managing director of Integrity Legal here in Bangkok, Thailand. As the title of this video suggests, we're discussing censorship. And I've had a lot of people ask me this, a lot of correspondence on this topic. Folks basically asking, you know, what about the situation? You know, there, there have been these various decrees regarding quote unquote fake news. There's been sort of, um, how do you put it, sort of a redefining of what's sort of being restricted here in Thailand with respect to that topic. And it seems that even information that may or may not be true, regardless, that may be irrelevant, the issue seems to surround whether or not it promotes fear and panic. That seems to be the policy reason behind the, this, this initiative, if you will. There are going to be those who are going to find this video rather strange, but hear me out, and this is sort of my position on it. I never liked censorship. I don't think, I don't think censorship in any, in, in any way is a, is a good way to do things. That said, I think for outsiders, this is going to sound very strange at first glance, but again, I'm going to sort of go through my logic on this. I actually think the reasoning behind this this decree that against sort of quote unquote fake news, I think the reasoning behind it actually comes from a good place, for lack of a better term. And what I mean to say is, you know, folks are trying to tamp down panic and hysteria and people just becoming consumed with fear. And I've I've talked about this in other videos that, you know, panic is just it it really can warp it 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 warps people's reasoning capabilities and they're not able to reason things out in a way that they would otherwise like to. And, and you see this with, you know, you see this in group dynamics a lot. And now that we have social media, group dynamics kind of happen in a, vi in, a, in a digital scenario. Point of this video is, while I understand the policy thinking behind trying to tamp down panic, my thinking on it is, is censorship isn't really the way to do it. Instead, if you want to, if you want to decrease panic, maybe truth is the, the better alternative. And what do I mean by this? Well, if the concern is about folks running around out there saying COVID's out of control, for example, which I, I've made a lot of videos on this channel about, I've got serious issues with the way the media has portrayed COVID in, in the sense that how it's, how it's been sensationalized. And look, it, to one degree or another, the media is kind of in the, especially in the 21st century, the media is kind of in the business of sensationalism. They need to get eyeballs, they need to get clicks, and you have to create, you know, sometimes sort of clickbait-like content in order to get those eyeballs and get those clicks. And again, this is what I think is, is trying to be regulated, for lack of a better term, in, these, in, in, these, um, in this decree regarding this issue. Now... There are many who would go off and, and get into political implications and ramifications and, and that perspective on this. I'm not getting into any of that at all. I'm just looking at this purely from the standpoint of the over, just the, the basic situation, this, this background of COVID-19 that we're, we're having to deal with here. And as I said, going back, again, with, with respect to that specific issue and, and tamping down fear on that, I think a, a better perspective of the truth would do a lot better, would go a lot further, especially if the media would broadcast it a little more in providing some context in this stuff, would do a lot better. That truth would do a lot better than any censorship, in my opinion, could ever do. This is from Johns Hopkins, so coronavirus.jhu.edu, and this is, this is the current data on Thailand. So confirmed cases... 578,375, deaths 4,679. So the case fatality rate, and as we've discussed in other videos on this channel, this is different from the infection fatality rate. Case fatality rate pertains to confirmed cases. And the IFR, the infection fatality rate, maybe, you know, you may actually see the percentage actual of deaths actually drop drastically if we knew how many, especially amongst asymptomatic folks, how many folks actually had the, quote unquote, had the disease. But we can't do that. We don't have perfect information. But even the case fatality rate, which is arguably a higher number than the reality, that is, that is still 0.8% of the 
of those who contracted COVID actually passed away from it. So in that context, again, if you really look at that, and if people sat down and thought about it for a moment and took a breath and said, wow, 99.2% of people that get this survive this. You know, to me, that truth has a lot more has a lot more powerful effect against any hysteria regarding this than any censorship ever could. On top of that, I think this is noteworthy: uh, deaths per hundred thousand, which which is kind of the which is kind of the best methodology of comparing jurisdictions. Deaths per hundred thousand in Thailand is six point seven two. Let's compare that to the United States, which is at one eighty six. 0.76 deaths per 100,000. Now, okay, you could say, well, U.S. is a lot bigger. You can't really take that whole jurisdiction and sort of compare it to Thailand. Fair enough. But one jurisdiction in the West, especially in the common law or Commonwealth countries, that is, in my opinion, a pretty, pretty analogous to Thailand, both population-wise and sort of landmass-wise and everything, uh, is the United Kingdom. And deaths per 100,000 in the United Kingdom is 194.33. Again, compared to Thailand, 6.72. So in the, in, if, when you sort of pull back a minute in the grander scheme of things, in my opinion, is it cause for concern? Is, is, is the situation cause for concern? Certainly. I, I've never disputed that. But the levels of, frankly, fear that this has engendered I think in many cases because there has been a lot of sensationalism that's been associated with this. It, I, I, I think it's out of proportion to the actual underlying threat. And, and I think it's having a substantial, in many ways, a substantially detrimental impact on policymaking and just on people's overall reaction, just how society is operating here in Thailand presently. And, and I think for lack of a better term, I'm not saying this to be sarcastic or snarky, but I think people need to get a grip. I mean, just take a deep breath and take a look at the numbers and understand, yes, it's a, it's a cause for concern, but is it, is it a reason to be sort of crippled in fear? No, I don't think so. So, I mean, again, I know it sounds strange to say that, you know, some of the censorship these censorship notions may come from a good place, but I do believe that. I think it's, I think it's policymakers on a certain level trying to say, hey, you know, people are getting really overwrought about this, and a lot of it is from the fact that there's a lot of a hysteria being whipped up out there. We need to try and do something about it. Do I think that's the best methodology to deal with it? My opinion, no. Uh, in, and in point of fact, especially with respect to this overall issue, I think the truth, again, showing these actual numbers for what they are, to, to my mind, it puts my mind much more at ease every time I see the actual numbers and realize that, yes, it's a concern, but it's not something that's way out of proportion with the risks that any of us face on any given day of our lives before or after quarter two of 2020.